a letter from don felipe to louise from letter fifteen of letters of two brides by honore de balzac recorded for librivox dot org by peter yearsley louise it is not for your peerless beauty i love you nor for your gifted mind your noble feeling the wondrous charm of all you say and do nor yet for your pride your queenly scorn of baser mortals a pride blent in you with charity for what angel could be more tender louise i love you because for the sake of a poor exile you have unbent this lofty majesty because by a gesture a glance you have brought consolation to a man so far beneath you that the utmost he could hope for was your pity the pity of a generous heart you are the one woman whose eyes have shone with a tenderer light when bent on me and because you let fall this glance a mere grain of dust yet a grace surpassing any bestowed on me when i stood at the summit of a subject's ambition i long to tell you louise how dear you are to me and that my love is for yourself alone without a thought beyond a love that far more than fulfils the conditions laid down by you for an ideal passion know then idol of my highest heaven that there is in the world an offshoot of the saracen race whose life is in your hands who will receive your orders as a slave and deem it an honour to execute them i have given myself to you absolutely and for the mere joy of giving for a single glance of your eye for a touch of the hand which one day you offered to your spanish master i am but your servitor louise i claim no more no i dare not think that i could ever be loved but perchance my devotion may win for me toleration since that morning when you smiled upon me with generous girlish impulse divining the misery of my lonely and rejected heart you reign there alone you are the absolute ruler of my life the queen of my thoughts the god of my heart i find in you the sunshine of my home the fragrance of my flowers the balm of the air i breathe the pulsing of my blood the light that visits me in sleep one thought alone troubled this happiness your ignorance all unknown to you was this boundless devotion the trusty arm the blind slave the silent tool the wealth for henceforth all I possess is mine only as a trust, which lay at your disposal, unknown to you, the heart waiting to receive your confidence, and yearning to replace all that your life, I know it well, has lacked, the liberal ancestress so ready to meet your needs, a father to whom you could look for protection in every difficulty, a friend, a brother, the secret of your isolation is no secret to me. If I am bold, it is because I long that you should know how much is yours. Take all, Louise, and in so doing bestow on me the one life possible for me in this world, the life of devotion. In placing the yoke on my neck you run no risk. I ask nothing but the joy of knowing myself yours needless even to say you will never love me. It cannot be otherwise. I must love you from afar, without hope, without reward, beyond my own love. In my anxiety to know whether you will accept me as your servant, I have racked my brain to find some way in which you may communicate with me without any danger of compromising yourself. Injury to your self-respect there can be none in sanctioning a devotion which has been yours for many days without your knowledge. Let this, then, be the token. At the opera this evening, if you carry in your hand a bouquet consisting of one red and one white camellia, emblem of a man's blood, at the service of the purity he worships, that 
will be my answer. I ask no more, thenceforth, at any moment, ten years hence, or to-morrow. Whatever you demand shall be done, as far as it is possible for man to do it, by your happy servant, Felipe Enares. P.S. You must admit, dear, that great lords know how to love. See the spring of the African lion. What restrained fire! What loyalty! What sincerity! How high a soul, in low estate! I felt quite small and dazed, as I said to myself, What shall I do? End of letter. This recording is in the public domain.